And there's a, that's what the uh, heat sink, the LED is here, and that's the heat sink. You can change the size of the heat sink, the shape of the heat sink, but you need one. End digression two. Questions? Yes? Is that uh, the LED pointing out towards us or is it mounted up? The one in the engine or the lighthouse? They're, they're aimed at you. Can you point them up and so they're seen from all directions? Uh, no, it, it is not a, a multiple direction emitting device like a halogen bulb, no. No, it is directional. But could you take two of them and put them back to back? It has a pretty wide um, dispersal, dispersion angle of the light. Uh, you know, you notice I'm standing over here way to the side of that lighthouse and I'm getting an awful good representation. So you know what, I wouldn't use two, I'd use three. Then you see it from all directions. Okay. So we can start actions based on time. We did time, right? Pause for a certain length. Switches of all kinds. Toggle switch, push button switch, read switch, any type of sensor. We can do things based on light. We can do things based on temperature. It doesn't matter. OK. What I really like to do and operate, at least for the last six months or so, is animation. And I'd like to show you some of those things. So we'll do animation. Uh, a little bit of background, I belong to the Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society and we were asked about a year ago to help Phipps Conservatory, which is a botanical garden in, in Oakland section of Pittsburgh, to put an outdoor garden railroad in. So we helped them to design and we built the thing and we decided it'd be kind of cool to have some animations. So that's where this comes from. What I decided for a lot of the animations, servos were the logical thing to use to make stuff move because we normally think of motion with animation. Uh, how many know what a servo is? Done model airplanes? Servo is a little gizmo that makes the elevator go up and down, the rudder go left and right, the ailerons do that stuff. Okay. By sending precisely timed pulses, the pickaxe can send the servo's arm to a specific position and hold it there. Would you believe that little eight-pin chip has a servo command? Built in. If you send it one set of pulses. You see the silver on here? I hope you can tell that's it. It goes 90 degrees left. A different set of pulses, it goes straight up. Another set of pulses, 90 degrees right. And anything in between. It's about 180 degrees that you can do a servo. OK, I have a video here that hopefully will show up well. And this is Windows telling me that I'm about to execute an external program and it might eat my computer even though I wrote it. Okay. This, oh, I guess that doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work on an external video. It, trust me, you're seeing an oscilloscope screen. And a, and a bunch of fancy stuff up here and now we won't do any more videos because it doesn't work. <laughs> it's working on my screen but it won't work through the external projector so I apologize for that. Since I've only known this projector for 40 minutes. Turn it's your screen around, baby. Well, the only problem with that is I have an external hard drive connected that might be unhappy if I did that. But yeah, let me, here, give you a tiny bit of proof that I'm not crazy. Can you see the waveform at the top changing? And again, I can show you this over at the, uh, yeah. and the servo moving. So what you're doing is looking at the pulses as the servo is moving in conjunction. So you can put the servo anywhere you want. All right, let me go back to something you can see. Okay. That's it. You connect the servo to ground, plus five, and one pin goes to the pickaxe. That's it. And that pin sends pulses that puts it all the way 90 degrees one way, straight up, you know, and anything in between. Yes? You connect the LEDs to out one and out two. You connect the servo to out four? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was pin specific. No, I don't, I don't think it matters. There are some pin specific things, though. You're right. You have to pay attention, but I don't think it matters. I think I could have used any. Matter of fact, I know you can because you can run multiple servos. Okay. Only three wires. Two for power, one for pulses. There's the software. And that software does this. And hopefully this is oh, terribly plugged in and twisted. And You know what? I'm just going to use that little battery. Where's the three? 
Uh, the big 12 volt one. I had a 12 volt one that was three in front of the speaker. Ah, good eye. Thank you. Okay, this is if I push the button, water spout. Now I also have this set up so that when it goes down, I don't know if you notice, there's a light lit for a second. It also triggers a, a soundboard so that you could have sound effects with it. Here's the same thing in the guise of an outhouse. This is one of the things we have at Phipps. When the train goes by, it triggers the, con the controller inside. It pauses about five seconds to let the train get completely by and then And there's a little guy. <laughs> now, did you notice the door closed in two steps? I just thought I'd throw that in. It's how hard. You know, you just change your, your loop a little bit. Let's do it again because it's fun. Sound effects. <laughs> All right, another one. Let me, since we don't do video, let me see where I am. That's the, oh, that's it. What this is over here, I have two potentiometers that adjust the position so that you don't need to change the program. If you want to just fine tune where that water spout goes, you can adjust these potentiometers to make that the way you want it. Okay. How do you keep these circuits waterproof throughout doors? That's your problem. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Here, this guy here has been running at Phipps since November and they yeah, just use a watertight box. Yeah. And some water does get in there, but everything, there's about an inch below, and there's some holes in the bottom. And it works rather well. I got to show you the other one. You'll like the other one, though. Wait, hold on a minute. We're not done yet. Okay. Uh, what time is it? Okay, we're going good. Okay. Uh, a custom circuit board finishes off. Okay, that's the circuit board that we're using. These little adjustments here determine exactly where it's going to go. What's the LED on there for? Uh, power. I usually put a power LED to let me know that I have it plugged in. Opportunities for using such animations are only limited by one's imagination. Don't you love that when people say stuff like that? Okay, I can't show you the outhouse video, but I showed you the outhouse. I can show you the water spout because I already did. That's, that was a video. I didn't show you the prairie dogs. Kids love this one. When we're at Phipps, we don't tell the people that these things are there. We kind of let them find them. And we, we might say, you know, there's something interesting over on that side of the layout. There are, and this is a southwestern layout. There are, I'm going to switch batteries here. Um, there's a desert area, and there's a prairie dog town. And we decided it'd be kind of cool to have the prairie dogs do something. So there are six, five, five of these that randomly get activated. This is ground level. There's a big box underneath buried. And see the servo and a wire. And this is an old 357 cartridge. And one of our members is very artistic and she carved prairie dogs. And what happens, 